Hello, networkers, and welcome back to another episode of Ask a Network Engineer, where I will answer one of your questions. And in this episode, I want to talk about troubleshooting, a troubleshooting video series. Now, this question was um, posted by Gerson, and he says, uh, maybe you should release a new training series regarding troubleshooting any kind of environment. Day Center, WAN, Firewall, Firewall Multi-Vendor, VPN issues, Wi-Fi delays, etc. Okay, let's talk about that. Okie dokie. Um, I remember a long time ago that when I was preparing for my CCNP back in 1999, there was a dedicated CCNP test for troubleshooting. Okay. I think there is one now also for the current CCNP track. But I remember there was a troubleshooting one and, you know, okay, you know, but networks back then were simpler then. They weren't as complex. It was about troubleshooting T1s, Ethernet, basic router troubleshooting, basic switch troubleshooting. That's what that test was really, really all about. Okay. So the idea of a troubleshooting training series, that does sound like a great idea. But the expectations of doing that is really, really a challenge. And the main reason for that is it's really hard to predict and to show how to troubleshoot networks in many different scenarios. It's like trying to uh, predict what's going to happen in your lifetime, what kind of issues that you will encounter, and how to solve those problems. Or here's a, here's a better one. How to raise your kids. There's no manual on how to raise your kids. There's nothing. There's attempts or particular tips or tricks to help you with that. But there is no solid path for how to troubleshoot that because it's hard to kind of predict what the potential scenarios could really be. And that's probably why you don't see a lot of dedicated troubleshooting. Um, now, your particular question was about troubleshooting any kind of network environment. Not just like routing, but like day center, WAN, Wi-Fi, VPNs, like everything, right? And you're probably gonna see more of it in particular chunks of it. Like here's are the common issues that you may encounter and here's how you can solve those problems. You're gonna see chunks like that. You're not gonna see a full dedicated video series and there's really nothing out there because of what I just described. It's really hard to um, to do a particular series like that and to know what are the potential scenarios out there because I never really look It was interesting though because Do this look at some of these support forums out there, right? Like the Cisco community support forums Politan networks or if you have access to that look at any of these support forums out there See what kind of questions that they're asking. I sometimes do this and I look at these particular questions and I go, wow, I never encountered those issues before. So it's like people are encountering very different issues that I have never encountered before. Now, my brain goes back and say, well, there's a couple of things that I'm curious to know about why they are experiencing that. And I'll talk about that further in this particular video. But that's why for me, when I talk about troubleshooting, what I talked about extensively in another previous episode about troubleshooting is really about the high level, the logical thinking of how you should approach any kind of a troubleshooting situation. OK, so that is so regardless of the scenario that you're in, it's just really a basically about how do you just tackle any scenario using a general guideline to approach that problem. When we talk about troubleshooting networks or troubleshooting a device, things like that, well, let's take a step back for a second. Because what's really important is, well, am I troubleshooting this for something that is a new deployment or for an existing deployment, right? Because how you troubleshoot that will be um, very different, the main points, right? So for example, so for a new deployment, there's really two main factors involved. The first one is compatibility. You want to make sure that let's say that you're deploying a firewall okay a brand new firewall you've never done it before 
So you want to make sure that you're using the correct hardware, that it has the correct software, the most updated and reliable software installed on that firewall, and that the features and the services that you want to use are compatible or licensed on that platform. So compatibility is extremely important. The second thing is, is making sure that you get the appropriate deployment or configuration guide for setting up that firewall step by step. Okay, and that's kind of the focus of kind of the training that I provide of showing certain things step by step. Now, if it is a existing environment, well, that has a lot more stuff to really look at. Because yes, you configured it, you deployed it, so you know it works, okay? But issues could potentially come up. And that's why I basically brought up that the issue that you may encounter will likely be either with a recent change event, like a misconfiguration. I see that too many times. It could be with a software event, like a software bug. Those come up a whole lot, where I see particular anomalies that I'm like, what is going on here? And if I do a reboot, it fixes it. If I do a software update, it fixes it. Software bugs are really, really strange, and it makes it hard for you to troubleshoot because you're like, Maybe I, mis maybe I misconfigured something. Uh, it could be though, but very likely you're encountering a bug. That happens a whole lot with any kind of system that has an operating system or software that is running, okay? But the issue could also be a hardware event. Um, basically some kind of a device that has failed. A module, the entire device itself, the power supply, those are the things that can also be at play. But let me expand on that even further and add some more criteria of what to look at for troubleshooting beyond the recent change event, software event, and the hardware events, okay? And one of them could be with performance or resource limitations, okay? So you may basically get a firewall, but if you do not spec out the correct firewall, then you're going to overwhelm it. High CPU, high memory, High congestion will obviously incur, okay? Even if it's for a switch. If you do not correctly design it based on the requirements, the performance requirements, then yes, that can cause delay. That can cause packet loss. If it's a multimedia environment with video or voice, then you can get jitter. That's also a very bad thing for real-time traffic. And that could be um, as a result of the hardware that you're using. So that's why getting that, uh, getting correct hardware is important. Now, those are things that you may not uh, initially notice during a new deployment, right? You may, you may set it up and great, it works perfectly fine. But over time, when the network starts getting utilized more, then these things could eventually kind of trickle in. So that's why um, getting the correct kind of hardware is important, which means I'll add compatibility to this list as well for troubleshooting making sure that you have the most compatible hardware that aligns with your requirements. That's also very, very important. But also for troubleshooting, whether it's for a new deployment or an existing deployment, for me personally, it's really about process of elimination. That is something that I really look at. That which component on my network is causing the problem, okay? And that I can look at this and say for each component that I'm looking at, looking at the firewall, looking at the core switch, looking at each of the switches, the access switches in the environment, looking at the controller, whatever may actually be in that topology itself. Is you know trying to determine is there a did anything change configuration wise? Is there a potential software bug on any of these devices? Maybe there's a hardware related event and trying to isolate each one, we can kind of get where the issue itself could, could be at. So if you talk to any other network engineer or what they recommend, including some of the other experts out there, you know, they'll tell you basically a series of things to look at for troubleshooting, right? Regardless of the protocol or of the service itself. One of the things that they will always talk about is you got to understand the protocol itself, right? Like if you're troubleshooting a routing issue with OSPF, understanding OSPF is very, very important. If you do not understand OSPF, then you have no clue where to troubleshoot that, okay? So that of course makes sense. 
So you have to understand the technology that you're going to be deploying. Not just configuring because you want to configure it. You got to understand that. So that's really, really important. Um, but basically for troubleshooting or monitoring, verification, things like that, you want to use show commands to confirm that the operations of that protocol and service is working properly. So that's one component or method for troubleshooting. Uh, using debug commands is another one to confirm that the interaction between devices are working correctly based on that technology that is being troubleshooting, uh, troubleshooted. Uh, another one is connecting a network sniffer. That's a big one that a lot of people recommend for viewing the interaction of traffic between devices, right? A lot of people love doing network sniffers and most times I don't think that's necessary. But in some cases where it's really like tricky or weird scenarios, I can see that, okay? But my argument is that a network should not be deployed complicated, okay? It should be deployed in a very streamlined type of way. You know, you shouldn't have to do some kind of weird router on a stick, this kind of configuration. You shouldn't have to do that. That means that there's some kind of a, it's probably coming down to a business requirement. But networks should not be built complicated because you got to look at it from a support perspective. That you need anyone to support this environment. And the more complicated it is, the harder it is to troubleshoot it. So you keep it nice and simple. Okay, I have always done that. Whether it is a whether it is a ten size user environment or a hundred thousand user environments, I do it the same way. No network can be complicated. You just have to communicate with the business to understand what is your requirements, what is important. So you got to kind of know the kind of questions to ask, and making sure that you build the network to accommodate those requirements. But to, of course, make sure that it is simplified and is easy to manage so that when issues do arise, then you know how to handle those because there's no strange complexity in the mix. OK, I can talk about that topic for a long time, but um, I've seen complicated networks. I have done consulting work where I've seen networks where I cringe to death. And I'm like, this is why you're encountering issues. Why are you doing this? And they're like, yeah, well, I didn't know how to configure this router to do that. All right? Okay, gotcha though. Um, so, but that's more of a skill set that or resources that they may not have at their um, have, have access to. But anyway, um, so yeah, so a network sniffer, um, debug, show commands, and of course using network tools. So that's a lot of the more the common recommendations that most people will say for how to really troubleshoot. That's what it really, really matters. Now, all those methods are, of course, very, very good. They're going to basically point that maybe the event is configuration related or maybe it is a software event if what you see has some very strange results. So here are my final points, a wrap up of this particular episode. The original question was talking about um, me considering doing a comprehensive troubleshooting training series that if you are deploying any kind of a network and you encounter an issue, I can, you can say, okay, let me, let me go to that topology or solution and go to problem number 418, which is the problem that I'm experiencing. And then great. That tells me how to troubleshoot that. I said I set that particular question in that format because there are so many different scenarios of issues that can come up. There's so many out there. As I said before, look at the Cisco Community Support Forum. There's pages of people with unique problems, and many of these problems I have never seen before or encountered before in any environment during the last 20 years of my networking experience. And I always look at certain problems and I kind of go, how are they ending up in that situation? But I have, but for me, for best results, I have always learned. Um, I guess the bottom line is compatibility and configuration. Make sure that you have the correct hardware with the right resources, memory, CPU, software, licensing, things like that, and making sure it's configured correctly. And don't overcomplicate the configuration. That is something I see a lot. I see a lot of people, 
they just put a lot of random commands, right? And I think that they're following some other kind of website that's telling them about, hey, just configure this. And they're just putting in commands, but they don't know what those commands are doing, which is dangerous because that is harder to troubleshoot those kind of things. And it makes it difficult for like where you begin when you see certain errors that comes up. Here's a quick story before I wrap this up. I remember um, as a consultant years, years ago, I was called in because there was a particular customer, uh, actually a consultant, that had a particular environment where they were getting a lot of intermittent drops that was really strange. They were saying there's no congestion on the internet, but there's our users, our servers, for some of them are getting drops. So I get called in I look at the configuration on the switches and they had these commands which I put up here and I'm like why are you using these commands you don't need to use these commands so I removed all that garbage problems were solved all right that's because of a configuration basically a misconfiguration you don't need to do all of that Okay. The more complicated you make your network, the harder it is to troubleshoot it. And it does not need to be complicated. You do not need to add great, like extensive commands to your, to your devices to be secure or anything like that. And if you are, you have to understand what those commands are doing, which is basically, again, which is what a lot of network engineers recommend. You got to understand the protocols and the commands that you are going to execute. That's what that really comes down to. So again, the training series, I think that's a great idea, but it's really, don't worry about the details of all of that. You gotta take a step back and look at the main points that I've talked about, compatibility, following a reliable configuration source, um, whether it's videos, documentation, a deployment guide, follow those particular things. Look at basically process of elimination, Look at performance limitations. Look at configuration changes or misconfigurations or software bugs or hardware events. That's really what your focus should be for troubleshooting any issue that you may encounter. And we are done with this episode. So if you have any questions about being a network engineer or anything in the networking field, post those questions below in the comments and your question will come up in the future episode on this channel. So please like, share, and subscribe, and support us at routehub.net. And until next time, keep networking.